Okay, so just going to go over some of the safety aspects of uh, the Spinzol. So, you know, one of the things that a lot of people are concerned about who uh, read about laboratory centrifuges is how dangerous they are. So I just want to go over some of the things that we've added to this unit to make it particularly safe. Uh, first, most important one is this, which is the interlock. And this interlock, whenever this machine is spinning at over 100 RPM, you'll see that this light starts flashing, indicating that you can't open the lid. And now, even if you press the lid unlock switch, you can't unlock it. In fact, even if you turn the power off and try to open it, you can't unlock it. And that is so that there's no way that you can take this lid off accidentally and put your finger into the spinning rotor, which is what we're really worried about. That's the primary safety feature of the Spinzol and actually uh, the thing it's most difficult for people to wrap their head around because there is no piece of kitchen equipment that acts that way. Oops. Second, uh, just like any normal um, device, we have uh, guards. So this hole you can't stick your finger in. You can't stick your finger in here. This is actually designed to reject a pencil falling into it. So that if something falls out of your pocket, nothing dangerous is going to fall in here. There's no way to gain access to this while it's running. Uh, another aspect of the um, uh, safety on this that seems counterintuitive is we actually spec, uh, spec a low torque motor for this. And the reason is this. If you had an extremely powerful motor in here when it was spinning very rapidly and it went into imbalance mode, it would be able to force itself into a dangerous uh, situation. With the Spinzol, if there's any excess friction, which, you know, obviously you're never going to stick a box cutter into your, uh, well, I hope you're never going to stick a box cutter into your spindle. But if you stick uh, something like this that prevents the um, rotor from spinning, see if we can fit it in there, yeah. right? And this could be due to friction. This could be due to the fact that the motor just can't sense how fast it's going. It's going to attempt to spin, it's going to attempt to spin for uh, five seconds. And if it does not sense spinning, it's going to start flashing like that. Uh, once this unit starts flashing, you have to turn it off, wait for the lights to come back on, whoops, and then turn, turn it off again. Anytime it thinks it should be spinning and it's not, you're going to be uh, in that situation. So let me show you another safety mechanism that confuses a lot of people. This is locked, but if it vibrates a lot when it's working, what will happen is this will pop open. And we do that that will actually turn the motor off. So if this thing is spinning and it starts vibrating a lot when it's spinning, this lid, because of the vibration, will pop open like this. And that will actually, if it does it hard enough, prevent it from spinning, which is another safety feature of the Spinzol. Lastly, if, you, if it falls over, you'll notice it goes into all flashing light mode. And if it goes into all flashing light mode, then you know uh, something bad has happened. It shuts off. Anytime it's all flashing, you have to turn the unit off and back on again. Those are the primary safety mechanisms of uh, the Spinzol. I'll notice, note one thing uh, for you uh, in case you should ever do this. I hope you do not. So I will not blame it on you. I'll blame it on some other knucklehead in your establishment uh, who does it. But if someone were to take a screwdriver and play around with these things, which you should never ever do, and go like that, you'll notice that now you can't put the lid back on at all. And it says lid is locked. Do not attempt to use the spins all in this configuration. Just press the lid unlock button. It will go back into normal mode and you can start again. But again, never mess with these interlock systems.